without further ado, my brother in Christ, Pat Simmons. Go give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, um, Randy, uh, Jeremy. Um, just thank you as a church, I mean, for having me. One thing I found out pretty early on when I started this a little over two years ago was that church, I, I thought, man, churches will love to have me come speak. <laughs> I quickly found out that churches have their own agenda. Yeah. Um, and I did, and and I wanted my ministry to stand alone. I didn't want my ministry to be part of a church because sometimes um, those ministries within the church they lose focus. So I didn't want that to, with, with bikes for Christ. Um, so thank thank you all very much for having me. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is just tell you about myself, uh, share some testimony about. Um, my upbringing and um, you know just what I've been through, what and what brought me to uh, to start Bikes for Christ. Um, I, I wrote a song and I was hoping to perform it today, but I didn't. My voice is not cooperating. But uh, the, the lyrics of that song go: I wasn't lucky, I was blessed. I had two parents, two parents that strove for righteousness. Um, I was lucky. I was born into a, a Christian home. I was born into a Christian family. Not not everybody uh, is blessed to have that. And um, was brought up at First Baptist Dover, just down the road from here. And um, went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Youth group, group youth choir, youth everything. Um, and for the most part, I was a pretty, pretty good kid. Um, my senior year of high school, I was vice president of Fellowship Christian Athletes here at Plant City High School. Um, but, like a lot of kids, whenever they graduate, they want to go out and they want to see, well, what's out there in the world? And I did a really good job of going out and, and finding, finding out what was out there. And it wasn't, it wasn't all good. I, uh, I pursued a career in music. I moved to Nashville for a little while. Recorded up there, and um, you know, in my early twenties, I, I fell out of church. I, I don't think I ever fell away from God, um, but I, I wasn't walking with Him either. It's like you know, God, God's always going to stay there. We're the ones that yeah. go the other way. Um, so during this whole time, my uh, my parents prayed for me. And um, I prayed for me a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to go into everything that happened to me, but um, I tell you, prayer, prayer is a powerful, powerful thing. Amen. And um, so it was probably about 10 years ago that I uh, started coming back to church and um, started coming on Sundays on a regular basis and everything. And um, that, that was really, really could have been a better move. Um, and then um, I got involved with I got involved with somebody, and I I, I really I, I really uh, didn't know what all her faith entailed because I thought we were uh, pretty much on the same page as far as our religious beliefs, um, both relig religion and politics and you figure if you're on the surface is if everything like that's good then okay, what, what's going to happen well we were best friends really and did everything together for about three years until finally I, I came to the point where I, I love you and I wanted us to date well at that point I found out that Mormonism is different from Christianity <laughs> there, were, there was a lot of uh, a lot of stuff I had to do um, and so, so that relationship continued for another three years, but it, uh, uh, anyway, we haven't been together in a year and a half now. Um, in fact, she's married to somebody else now in her own faith. And, um, but what it did do 
is that it, two things, it, it drove me back to really seek out if what I believed was real, if what I believed was the truth, and I can tell you 100% what I believe is the truth. I believe that the Bible is God's Word. Um, so, the other thing it did, though, is it actually made me look into, um, do a lot of research on, on the Mormon religion. So now, so much so that I can now pretty effectively um, talk to someone of that faith. And I don't even have to use the Bible to show them where they are wrong. I can use an old scripture. <laughs> now I don't know who all is going to see this video, but uh, it could be interesting to follow out of this because I don't know they talk about this. I just felt inspired. But bottom line is, and coming back to my own faith is the fact that I wanted to do something, and I wanted to do something for a while. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I loved, I'd gotten into cycling, and I knew I wanted to do something that shared my passion of cycling along with something else that had purpose. So three years ago, I finally decided that I, if I took enough Xanax, I could get on a plane and fly all the way to Nicaragua. And uh, First Baptist Dover has had a church there for almost, getting close to 20 years. And I wanted to go down there and uh, do a mission trip for a long time. But when you're scared of getting on a plane, man, that's, that's a big thing to overcome sometimes. But I went down and, and I saw what a third world country was like. I saw what people <clears throat> living without Christ were like in a situation like that. And I came back and I was on fire. I, I, if you go on one of those trips like that and you don't come back on fire, something's wrong with your heart. Mm. So I came back and I wanted, to, I wanted to do something. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I got involved with a, a ministry called Amazing Love Ministries down near Ebor. And I went one Monday night and it was a night that First Baptist Dover would help provide the food and I enjoyed it so much, I went back the next Monday night, even though it wasn't my church's night to feed. And then I went back the next Monday night. And now I've been going down there for over two and a half years every Monday night, um, every, almost every Monday night that I'm available. And so I got involved with them, and I got involved with some other ministries. And at that point, I saw what, um, what I thought I should do. And it's like, man, I see these people, the ones that are really... The, the needy, the downtrodden, the ones that are really trying to improve their situation. They need bicycles. They need transportation. They don't, you know, because they can't get around. If they're trying, if they're trying to find a job, they they need wheels to find that job. They need wheels to get to that job once they've secured it. So I started Bikes for Christ, and I tell you, in the past two years, it has just grown unbelievably, and we've been incredibly blessed. Um, we cover four counties. Um, predominantly, though, here in Hillsborough County. And the way that we work is we don't want to just give out bicycles. Um, anybody can just give out bicycles. But we give out, with every bicycle we give out, we also give a Bible. Because we want to plant the seeds that's hopefully going to, number one, help their situation here on earth but also ultimately get them to God's eternal kingdom. And so we work through organizations, some large like Metropolitan Ministries, some smaller, but they have their own case managers, so they're able to vet out their clients and determine that is the need real and does this person really, really want to change their lives? They want to get better. And then they refer them to us. And um, it's, it, again, it's just been an an incredible blessing um, to have this. Um, as you can see in, in the video a while ago, you see the people with the bike and, 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 and with the Bibles. And um, I want to share one story out of all that. I, I had a guy, and his name's, his name's David, and I met him down at uh, Amazing Love Ministries. Well, David, he's around my age, grew up in the area, 
But man, you talk about a different path than, than what I've been down. And um, he, he'd done it all, your drugs, your alcoholism, everything. And he knew that I'd started Bikes for Christ and that he could come to me anytime and ask me for a bicycle, but he waited. He waited until he got sober. He waited until he got a job. And then their Amazing Love Ministries on their campus, they gave him a place to stay. At that point, he came to me and he goes, can I have a bicycle? I said, absolutely. You're the type of person that, that we want to help. And now you fast forward almost a year and a half later. I want to tell you, he's still sober. He's still working. He's still living there on the church campus there. <laughs> he's one of their number one volunteers on that church campus. And not only that, but he's, he's donated back at least three bikes to Bikes for Christ now. So... That's, I, I, love, I love sharing that testimony about him because that's what we want to see. We want to see people um, grow. We want to see them grow in Christ and we want to see them, I mean, that, that's great enough, but when they give back on top of it, that, that's just, the, that's the cherry on the top right there. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, that's, ba that's basically all I wanted to share with y'all today. Does anybody have any questions at all? Okay. What, what type of the bikes, some people I know will say, well, I've got a bike, but what kind of repair or disrepair okay. or should a bike be in? We would love every bicycle to be in rideable condition. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen. I would say 85% of the bicycles we get need some type of repair. Luckily, we are now partnered with uh, University Bicycle Center, and they are doing the repairs for us for free. Wow. And, um, yeah, God's good. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I mean, it, as, long, as long as it's close to rideable, like it needs tubes, it needs cables adjusted, you know, stuff like that, that's, that's, that's great. Um, if it's something that's been sitting out in the yard for a year, probably not what we're looking for but um, you know when, when I first started this I was taking anything and everything man I got a lot of junk right now <laughs> but uh, you know when you're starting out something you just you, get, yeah, you do what you got to do so I just want to say thank you again for having me here um, as far as bicycles uh, no there's not really a certain type uh, I will say our Clientele seems to be predominantly men, some men's bicycles. But uh, yeah, and, and let me just touch on that. So our, um, we, we want to help out anybody in need, but we're really geared towards underprivileged kids because I firmly believe that every kid deserves a bicycle. They, I mean, they, they, they can't help the economic uh, situation that they're born into. And then our other big thing is veterans. Veterans uh, that are trying to get back on their feet, and we reserve our best bicycles for our veterans because of what they've sacrificed for our country. Um, so those, and like I said, just anybody in need that in, and, and that's making an effort to better themselves and get back on their feet, those are the people we want to help because those are the people that have reached that point. They know they know they need to get better. So, yes, sir. Um, besides donating bikes. How can we personally get involved in what you're doing? We always need volunteers. Um, for instance, <laughs> yesterday was a perfect example. Um, we participated in two different events. One was called uh, Dream Fest, and that was down in Tampa. It was geared more towards... Uh, the Crawfish Festival. That was the other. <laughs> but uh, that Dream Fest was geared more towards helping veterans find resources they needed. And then the Crawfish Festival. Um, that was uh, over in the Brandon area, and uh, that was a great opportunity to be able to get in front of folks. So if you, if you, uh, if you like to talk to people, you like people that like to talk to people. If you like to talk to people about God, that's even better. Um, 
But yeah, we need, well, we need volunteers for stuff like that. Uh, we need people occasionally to do pickups and drop-offs for us. So if you would like to do that, that's, that's available as well. It would definitely help if you had a, you know, a vehicle to do so, like a truck or something like that, or already have a bike rack on your car. Um, but yeah, we're, we're always open to volunteers, and, and uh, I'm open to suggestions too, because um, we, we want to get better as an organization. We can always get better. So, anything, anybody else? Yes? How many bikes have you gifted so far? I would say somewhere at this point, I don't want to go too high, I don't want to go too low. Um, but I know it would be somewhere between 200 and 250 bikes. Wow. So, and, and this is an ongoing thing. I know how there are some organizations out there once a year they'll do their big giveaway at Christmas time and stuff. No, this is, this is ongoing. This is, this is my passion. This is what I want to be my life's work. So it's going to continue day in, day out. And uh, we're going to help as many people as we possibly can. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick said something that was very important to us. And I was sharing a little joke with him earlier. Because as a church, y'all are here. And you're a captive audience. So we get a lot of people asking, can we come and share? And I'm promise you there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of causes. And I'm not saying they're bad, I'm just saying there's a lot of them. And one of the things that we joke about, Pastor Kevin Wynn down in Durant talked to me about, and I shared with Patrick earlier, is this. If somebody calls and says they want to share, you say, well, how about a Wednesday night? A lot of times they'll look right at you and go, no, I'm a Sunday morning only kind of person. But when Pat called, Jeremy talked to him. He's already spent time with our children's ministry and shared with them months ago. And he shared it with them and they loved what they heard. And I said, that's something we need to be a part of and support in whatever way we can to lift Pat up in what he does. When he talks about his heart for the veterans, Mike and all of us, Elmer and Eddie and, and Dad and anybody in here that served, we have that same heart. We know that they come back and aren't always taken care of. We know, as he's, he's alluded to, he grew up out at First Baptist of Dover, and so did I. We've known each other a long time. My family was the same way his parents were. They knew each other very well, and we went to church no matter what we thought or what we had planned for Sunday, we were going to church. When I saw all the children this morning in that group, that giant group, go back, and I say that every Sunday, thank you, parents, grandparents, anybody that snatches their niece, their nephew, whoever it is, their neighbor, and brings them to church, they need to understand and receive that. Because every one of you can raise your hand. I was in church when I was little. And then there was after high school. And then there was after college. And then there was, for those of us, Rudy, we joined the military. And all those things that we did in the middle that sound very well and good. Hey, I went off to college. Hey, I got out of high school and I went to do this. God wasn't in much of that. We knew who he was because we were anchored and rooted into it when we were small. It's amazing the thing that tells children, if you want to learn a new language, learn it when you're a kid because you haven't been tainted and you haven't been messed up. And little children take the new languages better than adults do. Why? Because we've already got it figured out in our head. Why not put Jesus in there at a young age so that whenever things start to go wrong and you start to do your own thing and things get really bad, you remember that Bible verse. You remember that VBS. You remember that time when that uh, that teacher sat you down and sang that little song to you that I'm in the Lord's army and I, and I, I, I may march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery, all those things. But guess what? The bottom line is I'm in the Lord's army and he never kicks us out. He never retires us. He never gives us a dishonorable discharge. We're in his army and secure as long as you receive him as Lord and Savior. So I hear the undertone of Pat's heart. 
is that these people get provision, they get a bite, they get an opportunity, but they get Jesus. And so we have been in OQC purposely bringing people in from a comedian to a bike ministry. We're going to have the Gideons. All that we do is to realize that there are people out there that need Jesus. Most of you know Jesus. Most of you have already done the confession, the believing, and the receiving of Jesus. There are a lot of people. I had an opportunity yesterday to do a funeral for a teacher that had retired three years ago and passed away. And she was 60 years young. Of complications of surgery, she passed away. And Kimberly said it when I came home, because I told her I was going to the funeral. And when I got home, I said, listen, here's what I said at the funeral. She goes, I thought you were just going to the funeral. I said, no, I was there part of the funeral. I was the officiant of the funeral, the leader of the funeral. And I, this is what I said. And she says it always so kind of, I don't think it, but she said, your peers saw you in a different light. And it's very important for us to remember, even though we have missionaries come in and people who have ministries, you still have an opportunity to share and show the light of Jesus in everything and every opportunity you have. Whether it's at a festival, we went to the crawfish yesterday. Whether it's at Common Ground on Friday night to see a young man that Isabel took there to get to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Praise Fest yesterday evening to hear people shouting the name of our one and only true Messiah, shouting out loud. Guys, we have a responsibility, and that's to reach the loss for Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Ray Steve, come on up. Dear Heavenly Father, or Kimberly and Laura, God, we are thankful. I'm thankful that you grabbed Pat at a young age and you held him. We struggle. <laughs> We're the ones that say, let me see the world. And he said, I want to show you eternity. So God, this morning as we have this moment of reflection, as Melissa's already led us to understand that we need to come before your altar, not the world's. They're not our litmus. They're not our guide. They're not our measuring stick. They're not even in our scale when we think about what Jesus has provided for us. May we this morning... Think about and realize that other people need to know you. And the awesome responsibility and opportunity we have in our lives to just show it to God, I love to show off new things I get in my life. And, but I'm going to show you to everyone. So my prayer this morning for the people hearing his heart, Pat's heart, and to hearing these songs and to hearing these words, Lord, is that they truly understand you this morning. And how would we say that? One scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever, and those, it's everybody. It's not churchgoers. It's not rich or wealthy or middle class. It's not the clean. It's not the sober all the time. It's for those you gave your son. May we honor you by giving up our lives to serving you 